What's up everybody, my name is Arcagus, and today we're taking a look at Railroad Corporation 2, which just dropped into Early Access today. I've been looking forward to this game ever since they announced it, right after the successful launch of Railroad Corporation 1, uh, a few years ago now. I'm not quite sure how long. It, uh, 2020s have been kind of a blur for me, so I'm, I'm really not good at keeping track. But... I played a ton of hours of Railroad Corporation 1, right alongside Railway Empire and Railway Empire 2, which managed to beat Railroad Corporation 2 to the punch by almost a year, I think. And aside both of them being logistics games, you know, based exclusively on railroads, the two games are not really that similar to each other. Railway Empire is more of a macro game, it's more focused on you know these smaller territories and you have you know a larger space between regions and between uh, settlements to build and expand your railroads railroad corporation is a much more macro management type of game where you're crossing entire the entire continent almost in one map so the scale is different both being logistics game the logistics of each game are different so um, the, ex the experience that you get from each game is entirely unique and they aren't what I would say direct competitors to each other other than they kind of go for the same target audience. But you know, the, the TLDR is neither game is better than the other in any one particular way. They're both really good games on their own right and it would behoove you to try both games if you can. That being said, between Railroad Corporation 1, Railway Empire 1, and Railway Empire 2, if I was forced to pick just one game to recommend out of those three, I would probably say Railroad Corporation. I've spent more time playing that game than the other two games combined, uh, simply because the different experience requires uh, different times. So if you want you know, more time for your investment or just that more granular and epic feeling experience, then you would want to go with Railroad Corporation. With that being said, I, I cannot express enough how much fun Railway Empires, the, both games are, for what they offer as well. And if you have to choose between those two games, I would say go with Railway Empire 2. It does everything Railway Empire 1 does. And, it, you know, it closes out some of the gaps and some of the um, flaws in the the original game style. Nothing that was game breaking, just things that made it a little bit more tedious to play. They smoothed that out in the sequel. And that's what I'm hoping to see today as we get into Railroad Corporation 2. I want to see what sort of improvements they made over what was really a solid game that I can't really say had any real hangups other than like I said, the length of time it took to play the game. It, it's a very long-term game and requires a bit of commitment from the player to, to see it through, even through individual missions, especially if you're like me and you have to get every one of those achievements. All right, so that being said, wow, four minute introduction. That's way too long for YouTube audience, but sorry. All right, let's get, let's jump into it. All right, there's North Subjugation and Frozen Lakes. We're gonna go campaign. While the America's first transcontinental railroad was built and being operated intensively, the North regions of the continent remained untouched and became a great opportunity for investors. Lead a business expansion of new territories and make your new railroad corporation a story of a success. A story of a success. Somehow, a story of a success seems smaller than just the story of success. I don't know. Same will be once the game gets released. <laughs> okay. So again, this is an early access game, so it's not quite feature complete. We're on point eight though, so hopefully that means we're well enough along that we still get a very solid and complete experience. All right, 
Now I did opt in to the uh, supporter version of the game. So I paid a little bit more money for it than what you may pay for the early access. And that also gives you some extra maps, some extra graphics, and it, I believe it gives you some extra uh, employees. So I don't know how many of these are specific to that. It really doesn't tell you much. Your hideous. These are a lot of green items. So plus 100,000 for first four cities connected in a railroad network. Plus 80,000 for owning two warehouse buildings. Plus 75,000 for owning 10 locomotives. Plus nine. So these are all one off bonuses. This looks great because this is all, all boons, no veins. But this is just like early game boost, and then you're on your own after that. Okay, so locomotive power is plus 20%. That's nice. Mileage is plus 35%. So is that mileage between maintenance and my, or mileage for life cycle? Okay, engine efficiency is 15%. Okay, so the mileage is probably life cycle and efficiency is probably maintenance. Motors upkeep is plus 40% though. Research cloud cost is plus 20%. And but you start with two scientists for the research department. That's actually kind of nice. My instinct is to go with him. Building construction cost minus 12%. Building upkeep cost minus 12%. Commodities cost plus 3%. That's a little tough right there. Railroad construction cost minus 10%. Railroad upkeep cost minus 10%. Building construction cost plus 5%. This is actually better than this. This is limited to just construction. I mean, upkeep upkeep is great across the board. That that That's ongoing. It's just like building upkeep. But the, the setback for building construction is only for during construction of new buildings. That only happens at very you know specific points of the game, and that's not that doesn't creep up on you and build up over time. Whereas this plus three percent commodities cost, that pretty much runs the entire game, and so that can get you in the mid game if you're not if you're not doing as well as you hoped. That being said, I really think we want to go with with Cox. We like Cox. Oh, there's more. No extra bonus or penalty. A respected person in American business service, Robert Green. And Martin Rivera. Plus five minus five percent commodities cost. That's nice. But plus five percent railroad construction cost, plus seven percent upkeep cost. Uh the upkeep cost for the railroads, that's that's not great. So, yeah, I'm still inclined to go with Cox. Yeah, now we're the gold standard. It's all working. I think we're helping. Working things. All right, 1870, railroad construction is booming. More than 50,000 miles of tracks have been laid across the United States with more to come. Your predecessors have made the cost of commodities movement over long distance 20 times cheaper comparing to traditional transportation needs. Railroads are the answer to the needs of the na national economy. Now is a good time to hop, uh, hop on this train. Provide Dolphin Lake region with a decent railroad experience. Return a debt and get some experience to be able to take part. Return to dead and get some experience to be able to take part in more challenging projects and shape the history of transportation. Okay, so basically these guys have like sponsored you, provided for your education, provided for your, you know, your uh, establishment, and now you're repaying that debt by ser serving them before you move on to do your own things. All right, offices and go forward. Let's see how much of the screen can you guys see. You can see most of it. Yeah. 
This might look awkward, but what if we do this? That's not it. That looks good. Hopefully that won't be too awkward. Where's my mouse? There it is. All right, greetings as your CEO. I've chosen Gulfport to locate our office so we can start our venture. This city is a great place to start our railroad network. Local industry also supplies grain. Commodities supplied by local city industries are marked with a green square. Okay, so green is supply, red is demand. Uh, let's see. Build a railroad station. Our first move will be reselling grain that is produced here. To transfer goods to other settlements, you have to build the first train station in Gulfport. Train stations should be built within settlement borders. Okay, they demand passengers. Oh, we also have passengers. Okay, build a railroad station where your office is located. Gulfport. So, office. Stations, road construction. That's railroad construction. is different. Fort Lauderdale now demands coal. Where are we? Okay. I'm still trying to figure out how I build. Say something and I missed it. I don't. It's it's been a while. I, I, I give you. It's been a while since I. Okay, so let's select golf board. Okay, here we go. Golf board. Options now than you did the first game. I didn't really see it as a limitation before, but now I kind of do. Seeing what else they give you. Right, I am still struggling to try, try to figure out how to build my first. Lost money. It's got to be one of them. This is stations owned by your company. Oh, okay. So it's under your stations. Build new station. 
building a town. All right, so looking at the geography, we've got the riverland here, and we've got the river running this way. So I think we want our station to be running parallel to the river. Sex station in a, second station in a settlement with the existing consumption of grain. Grain demand. All the commodities that city buildings consume are marked with a red square. Use the minimap filter to find what buildings and what cities consume grain. Take into consideration that construction in larger and better developed cities is more expensive due to construction tax. Alright, so there's a filter. Grain. Everybody wants grain from us. That's Temecula there. That's, which, no, that's not Wichita Falls. That's Novato. And there's Clearwater. Okay, build a second train station and a station with a demand of grain. So we're going to go to Mikula here. Time to connect the stations by a railroad. To lay tracks, you need to start building from a train station or from an existing railroad. Then, when necessary, install semaphores on the railroad to manage train traffic. Connect the stations of Gulfport and Temecula. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, we're going to add a track. Can we afford that? I mean, we have a million, right? So yeah, we're going to add a track at both stations. All right. Next, we're going to go right side. I think. Yeah, this is this is Mexico. This is America. This is North America. So we're going to go right side traffic. So, railroad construction. Build a railroad network connecting two cities. <laughs> wow, 20 on the bridge. That's an expensive train track. And we should be able to parallel these. No. Okay, so you can intersect the thing. Okay, because the bridge is so expensive, I'm thinking that we're going to go, go ahead and make it two-way. What is shift? That's it. to be easier. There we go. Alt. Okay.
train depot, setting up a station facility. To buy a locomotive, you'll first need a train depot. This is a special facility that can be added to any of your train stations. Locomotives can only be purchased at stations with a train depot installed. Install the train depot department in one of your stations. I am not done yet. Okay, so hopefully alt. Three singles like we can always use a track in both directions. All right, and we're setting up one way. How big are the trains? Okay, add a train depot facility to any of your stations. Well, since golf ports are our main, we're going to build this up first. So this will have the most traffic right away. Train depot, set it up. We have it 300k. Everything is ready to start your transport business except one. You need a train. First, you need to purchase a locomotive at a train station with a depot. Then you'll be able to set up a train route and earn your first money. Earn your first money. Important. Nobody gives you the commodities for free. Take into consideration that when you... Right. Range your trains reach between two cities. Okay. So, one ton, cargo mass 24 tons, max speed 45, 48 to max speed 45. So, 8 kilometers per mile, 72, 38 kilometers per hour. Yeah, we'll do it. We're going to unload. Let's see, let's go to the plant. Unload our train. Oh, they don't have passengers. They didn't even need They don't need lumber. I'll take the whiskey. Okay. 
that's it. That's our first dream. Bridge is a huge bottleneck for this reading. I wonder if there's a way we can create it. Sometime. Because I started it in Temecula, it has to go there first, pick up his first cargo, and then come back. I should have started in Gulf Port. So we lost the money. First, do you want to there and come back? I don't know. They're in the station. Why are they in the station? There's not enough whiskey. So how many do we actually have? Thank 
Oh, this is very expensive for us because we need to build up the grain supply here before the whiskey st starts to flow. And actually, we need glass too. So they're not going to be producing anything for us. That's a one-way trip. We need to go to Wichita and we need to get their glass. Which Wichita also has no demand for anything else we can supply right now. But we need that glass to make the whiskey product work. Then there's not gonna be this is still gonna be a one-way trip because they've got nothing else. Do we have 297k? Okay, we have the resource. Let's see. Stations build new. We're just going to do one track. Just because we are for funds. Since it's just one track, we don't have to be too picky about the layout. Oh. Okay. Well, we're going to go Wooden Bridge now because that's all we can afford, really. Sure. Money transfer receipt. That's the head of Apex Investor Support. Surprise board, let me inform you about the following. The board has noticed a no mo low money balance of the company and has initiated an urgent money transfer to support operational stability and current activity of, of Apex. The amount of external extra investment is 350000 If the company's money balance becomes negative, the company will go bankrupt. Take this notice seriously. All right, they don't like you getting low. If I would have known about the the funds relief, I would have gone ahead and gone for the second. What's this? Nice this green. Okay. okay, track wheel tools and helpers enable parallel road snap. All to on that. Keep railroad direction shift so that's make it perfectly straight. Show grid and snap and snap to cells. Ah, okay. Snap over to a fixed 90 45 angle H. Interesting. I like all that. Okay. We need a new train. Wichita Falls. Instant. There was no confirmation or anything. So boom, we got one. Right, we upgrade it. We can work on two at a time. That one gets an upgrade button. A confirmation button. Alright, so let's upgrade. We can work on two trains at a time. That should mean there's not really any bottlenecks. Alright, so now that we know more about bridges, does that mean we can like this bridge, yes, we can. So 
we can come back and upgrade this bridge later. Really, 40 is all we need. We can do it right now. And the reason that's all we need is because once, once these trains are fully loaded, they're not going to be going above 40 at all anyway. They will be going above 30, well above 20. Did they? They gave me money again? Okay, let's let's not abuse that. Let's be wary of that. I'm sure they're keeping track of that, and they're probably going to want it back at some point. All right. So this is smart. This go makes sure that you know we've, we're getting the most out of our trains uh, at the water crossing. Yeah, we will probably do the same thing here a little bit later. Shop, an important station facility. While traveling on the route, your trains will wear out and their condition will go down. To keep locomotives in proper condition, it's useful to construct a repair shop at one of the stations on its route. I think I jumped the gun here. Yes, I've already done that. Help launch a production facility in Novato. Look on your Mr. Wesley has invested in a flour mill in Novato. He's asking to deliver grain as well as any other raw materials required to launch the production. As a, as a reward, Mr. Wesley will pay you $100,000 as soon as this facility starts producing the end product. Starter and loading grain. Selling goal of grain has been achieved. We have earned a considerable amount of transfer, transporting selling grain from our home town. Now let's focus on investing and expanding our railroad network and transporting and selling more commodities to other settlements. It's also possible to transport passengers and mail. These transportations bring income depending on the distance it has been transported on. Yeah, passengers and mail is the best way to save yourself in the early game when you're running low on resources and funds. It's 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 important throughout the game, really. Passengers and mail are the lifeblood of railroads. All right, so start unloading grain to Flower Mill, Nevada. Check if other commodities are necessary to launch the production. They just need grain. build a new station. Oh, that's right. You have to tell them to repair when they're at the station. So, Macula. Yeah, no, it's automatic. It will repair no matter what. What are these buttons? Okay, so you can you can override. So you can override the behavior. So lower than preset in the train settings. So we want.
That's good. I do. I start the fort. Don't right click. Tax payable in the amount of eight hundred twenty-seven dollars for Q one of eighteen seventy-one. Okay. Did he stop? Now, since flour mill demand is running and producing flour, we can start making money on this commodity. Sell flour for a total amount of seven hundred thousand. Use the minimap filter. All right, looks like looks like they're taking. Are both in Gulfport and in Allentown. So we'll probably want to connect to Allentown next. So yeah, they need 25 tons of flour. They need 25 tons. Took up out Oh, I don't like that. We're going to stick you up here. Well, we want to be safe, so we get probably need a second track. Okay.
ですね This is going to be complicated. We want this guy to bring and bring passengers. Take flower. Passengers. Invest in new locomotive technologies research. In order to stay in business and develop fast, it is necessary to invest in research and development. To improve locomotives you currently use, as well as develop new models, a research department is required in the office. Rain floor is broken while en route. Crew is fixing the damage. Uh, we need a, we need another repair shop. Technology may let you, your trains pull more cargo, drive quicker, and speed up faster. At the same time, develop more something new and take time to work. So work. So it, it, it worth. It worth to start working on it beforehand. Tax. Uh, money transfer received. The amount of extra assessment. Let me write it. Alright, so this is probably just an early access thing. I don't think they just mean to just give you infinite money every time you get low. It's not fun. So I'm assuming, you know, that's just to keep you going. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at research. All right, so we're going to install. I think we want repairability first. Specialist, the salary, scientist level one, National Ross, research cost plus four percent. You know. 
maintenance cost minus 10% mileage plus 340. Okay, let's just do it. Okay. Let's see if we can do max speed at the same time. Yep. Repairability again. Repairability again. Starting the power system, that's going to be expensive. Repairability again. I don't know why we'd want that guy. We need a new specialist. That guy's not so good. He's expensive. All right. Do I not start? Start it. Sorry. Oh, this one needs both. Damn. Okay. All right. Another year. Government in Clearwater wants to stimulate the development of higher education. It offers our company to build a science. Offers our company to build a science university. And it occurs as a construction with a monetary reward of 200000 We're also be interested to know that specialists in higher education institutions are always interested in working on practical tasks. After the construction of the educational institute, there are relevant specialists who will want to join our office. All right, so go to Social Land. Science University is 92000 about to buy. You're now the owner of a plot that can be used to construct different social buildings. This type of building is not intended to produce or consume commodities, but rather for influence, influencing the supply of other buildings in the city or other consumption intensity or their consumption intensity. Some of these buildings may provide you with a stable, regular income. Keep in mind, once constructed, social buildings cannot be demolished. It's going to cost us a thousand a month, I think, four thousand a month. I don't know. Good day. I'm glad you support education in our city, and I would really like to share my experience with your team. I can start working right away. James Panner, level three specialist, has joined research department at the office. Okay. Let's go back to the research office. Where's the research office? Right here. All right. Go with that research. We have three people. We don't really have the money. If They'll just give us more money. Let's take a look. Sign, sign, sign. Go get me that Patterson. They didn't give me more money. They didn't give me my money. I was expecting the money. Oh, there it is. Actually, I don't know what that money was. Where'd that come from? Anyone? Year one. Huh? I'm a little confused by it. Let's go. All of our assets are liabilities. Both of them lost. We're not a great great position right now but we're getting there so how much is this place lost in this month 42 that's 42? Okay. I thought it was more. That's fine. Okay. 
we have enough money, we can do a repair depot. Like $35. As long as we don't go down, we should be okay. That's Railroad Corporation 2. I'm surprised it's in the state as it, as, as it is when Railroad Corporation 1 came out, or at least when I came across the game. It was pretty much well done and solid, polished everything. I mean, it, it was a complete game, and it worked right out of the box. Um, I'm not saying this game doesn't work. I'm just saying that it's a little rough right now, a little rough around the edges. The constant rollouts of the bailout money uh, was a little surprising to me and that's why I got a little bit you know careless at the end there but I think it's off to a good start from what I see it does expand on uh, basically everything that the game did before it does simplify a few things but not very much um, you still have the same level of granularity and control in this game as you did in the first game so I like that you know I like getting down in the weeds and working with my hands and, you know, really, you know, manipulating everything that I can, I can control, everything I can touch. So, um, in this way, you know, that game, th in that way, this game really does check all the boxes, but still it's, it's got a ways to go. And hopefully that's, that's going to be sooner rather than later, but yeah, this has been Railroad Corporation 2. Hope you like what you saw. If you do like what you saw, be sure to like, subscribe, and or follow whichever platform you want to see me on. I'm streaming every morning, every morning my time in Taiwan, which is evening time in the United States, Tuesday through Saturday, uh, which is going to be Monday night through Friday night in the United States on Twitch. So be sure to check me out there. And yeah, until next time, you guys be safe. So this is North America. We lose money all the time. <laughs> We're not like you people. We don't. We don't flock around every cell. Big deal. We find. We have money. This is the American plan. Yeah. Yeah. You're my best deal. You <laughs> go, <laughs>